Good morning, everyone. Boy, that was a major welcome in a minor key. <laughs> welcome to worship here at the United Church of Dorset and East Rupert on this day that we're, that we're celebrating the first responders of our community. Uh, I want to welcome you all. My humble welcome is, is what it is, but the best one of all is the one that we can share with each other. Let's turn to those sitting nearby and offer the peace and love of the Lord. You would all make a really great bucket brigade. Uh, let me share some announcements to pull us together as a community of faith this morning. We want to uh, thank the Charlotte and Pete Brooks uh, Flower Fund. Halloween was always Pete and Charlotte's favorite special day of the year, and so we always try to use their generosity to treat us to flowers on our altar on this particular Sunday morning. Thanks in advance to our acolyte, Jack Marquis, and our beetle, Aidan Barry. Thanks in advance to our lay reader this morning, Kate Koss. And thank you, Claire Honan, who is our worship technician there in the balcony. As I said, First Responders Sunday is being celebrated by all the congregations of the Interfaith Council. Uh, and so when you see your rescue and ambulance crew and fire department and police officers and uh, road crew, who did, did I forget anybody? <laughs> you get what I mean. Make sure you give them a heartfelt thanks for all they do to keep our community working. Uh, Halloween is tomorrow night, and uh, our front doors are always wide open to let loose uh, Tom Salmon's eerie... There we go. <laughs> and to receive some, uh, some treats being served so uh, if you're walking the Miracle Mile, make sure you come by the church. Uh, Bible study uh, continues Wednesday evenings at 5 in the conference room, and everybody is welcome to that. Uh, our raffling, the P-Flag raffle, is uh, ongoing for the Arthur Jones painting uh, entitled Winter Valley. And Skip will be downstairs during coffee hour uh, selling some chances for that. Uh, next Sunday is really the commencement of this new season's second hour programming. And uh, so on Sunday, November 6th, uh, back in the Upper Room Chapel, we will be listening to Andy Longacre talk about the history of the cemetery. There are ghosts 250 years old in that place. <laughs> and oh, by the way, uh, the worst, no, not the worst, the best uh, time change of the year, because you get an extra night's sleep, uh, we, turn, we turn our clocks back next Sunday. All right, any other announcements for the good of the body? That, yeah, Angie. <laughs> I'm going to do a challenge to help these ladies out. So if we could all just work together, it would be great. And we still have seats available for Thanksgiving dinner. Thanks. And welcome home. Thank you. Hope you had a good vacation. Uh, yeah, Ellen. I, I can't hear you. That's all right. I'm going to bring it to you. Such power. 
power of the mouth. Uh, we're having a green team meeting uh, November 9th. Uh, this is kind of a special meeting. It's going to be it's something of a discernment meeting. We're kind of trying to figure out a way of existing that is sustainable in the, within the congregation. Uh, the uh, two things, the reason I'm not announcing it ahead of time is that I'm hoping for input, or we all are hoping for input from the congregation as to ideas about green teams and what they might do or be and how they would work with the congregation. We're, uh, so anybody on that list on the back of your bulletins uh, under that green team thing, if you wanted to con you know, contact someone, if you have any thoughts, that would be great. Or better yet, come to our meeting. It's from 10 to 12, and we're gonna have goodies because we want people to come. Okay, thank you very much. You're learning, food brings people. Any other announcements while I'm out here? Seeing none, friends, let's unite our hearts, our minds, and our souls this Sabbath day morning as we worship God. Jack, Aiden, help us begin. Friends, let us call one another to worship our God this day. Why have we gathered today? We gather to see the spirit, the spirit of love, the spirit of power. A spirit of holiness that seeks to be lived. Live in relationships, live day to day, live to be shared. Shared to make a difference, shared to make a change. Shared to heal, rescue, and help. The question that meets us as we gather today is this. Are we willing to join in this Holy Spirit? Live and share. Let us enter in and see what happens. Let us worship God. Let's sing our opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. It is number 65.
then shall we enter further into our worship service this morning by sharing the unison prayer of invocation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Faith can be boiled down to two things, call and response. Sometimes we hear the call and don't respond. Sometimes we respond without soulfully heeding the call. We confess how difficult it is to do both and to be the kind of disciple of goodness and love the world needs us to be and Jesus calls us to be. Open our ears to soulfully hear. Activate our energy to soulfully respond to become instruments of God's grace. Amen. And friends, let's take a moment of silence for our own personal confession. And shall we finish and complete the endeavor of our confessions by embracing the power of God's love and forgiveness while we share the assurance of pardon. The good news is that God forgives us from our shame and guilt so that we may be renewed and revived to live by grace forevermore. Amen. Now I call upon Jack to lead us this morning in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, the glory forever. Amen. won't you kindly be seated and we are looking forward to the the Sunday school choir <laughs> okay a little unhappy lesson here you ready them bones and bones gonna walk around them bones and bones gonna walk around them bones and bones gonna walk around now hear the word of the Lord Neck bone and the neck bones connected to the collarbone and the collarbones connected to the shoulder bone and the shoulder bones connected to the arm bone and the arm bones connected to the funny bone and the funny bones connected to the ulna and the ulnas connected to the wrist bone and the wrist bones connected to the hand bone and the hand bones connected to the thumb bone and the thumb bones connected to the pointer bone and the pointer bones connected to the middle bone and the middle bones connected to the ring bone and the ring bones connected to the pinky bone and the pinky bones connected to the pinky bone and the pinky bones connected to the ring bone and the ring bones connected to the middle bone and the middle bones connected to the pointer bone and the pointer bones connected to the thumb bone and the thumb bones connected to the hand bone and the hand bones connected to the wrist bone and the wrist bones connected to the and the all that's connected to the 
funny bone, and the funny bone's connected to the arm bone, and the arm bone's connected to the shoulder bone, and the shoulder bone's connected to the rib cage, and the rib cage connected to the vertebrae, and the vertebrae's 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 connected to the hip bone, and the hip bone's connected to the thigh bone, and the thigh bone's connected to the knee bone, and the knee bone's connected to the shin bone, and the shin bone's connected to the socks, connected to the ankle bone, and the ankle bone's connected to the foot bone, and the foot bone's connected to the foot bone, and the foot bone's connected to the ankle bone, and the ankle bone's connected to the Shin bone and the shin bone's connected to the knee bone and the knee bone's connected to the thigh bone and the thigh bone's connected to the hip bone and the hip bone's connected to the vertebrae and the vertebrae's 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 connected to the chest bone and the chest bone's connected to the shoulder bone and the shoulder bone's connected to the Neck bone and the neck bone's connected to the collar bone and the collar bone's connected to the head bone. Them bones and bones gonna <laughs> rise again. Them bones and bones gonna rise again. Them bones and bones gonna rise again. Now hear the word of the Lord. What a wonderful part of our worship. The young people give us courage and lightheartedness, do they not? <clears throat> For our prayer of pastoral care, we remember that Psalm 85 proclaims, God speaks peace to the faithful, to those who turn to God with their hearts. Let us pray for the needs of the world, saying, save us, O God, we come to you. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God of favor and purpose, you are with us in our deepest pain, fear, and bewilderment. And you hear our cry when others sometimes turn a deaf ear and a cold heart. You lift us from the depths of discouragement and walk with us through the troubles of our lives. We come to you with confidence on behalf of the church, on behalf of the world, and on behalf of all who are in need. Save us, O oh God, we come to you. We pray for all your family, O oh God, for our sisters and brothers who belong to you throughout the world, who call on you by different names. And we pray for interfaith councils joined in mission to the needs of others, creating dialogue and understanding, and sharing appreciation in worship and community. Save us, O oh God, we come to you. We pray that as churches and individuals, we may be willing to work for justice and for the dignity of all persons. Hear our prayers for peace and order to permeate your creation, responding to your commands. And for creation, we pray for renewed efforts to embody faithful stewardship of the Earth's resources, that we may act more forcefully against climate change today and for generations to come. Save us, O oh God, we come to you. 
during this election season, we pray for all who are affected by violence and threats of violence in our country, much of it based on erroneous assumptions. In the midst of our divisions, may we find ways to work together in our nation for the common well-being and respect of everyone. And we ask for your power and love to overwhelm the chaos of nations. Grant endurance to the people in Ukraine facing the war's devastation against homes and civilian infrastructure heading into winter. And give us faith and courage, O oh God, to follow Christ so closely that divisions are dismantled, that reconciliation is accomplished, and that love casts out all fear. Save us, O oh God, we come to you. We now pray for those on this church's immediate needs list. Our prayers are with the Reverend Marion Pete McCart, with Ann Healy, with Stephanie and Stephen Blake. Our prayers <clears throat> are with Sophia and Gary Wilkins and Dan Pinsono. We pray for Carl Hedman and Sandy Carey and Noemi. We pray for Elizabeth LeBurge and Jace Berkheimer and Johnny D, for Nawidullah and Mustafa and Darlene Brown and Karen Statler and Tracy Breer and Hazel Mitchell. Our prayers are with Nancy, with Tom Brass, with John White, with Eric Stevenson and Carol and Neil Grote and Kathy Linde. Hear our prayers for Ken Norman and Jim Amadon and Robbie Littlewood. We pray for Jack Bertram and Tom Shanahan and Isabella Wasik and Ken DiMasio. We pray for Pam LaCosta and Steve Casey and Theo Cherry. Our prayers are with Dale Coppin and Carrie Comline and Bill McFall and with Michael M who faces heart surgery tomorrow. And our prayers in the Dorset Church are for all the trick or treaters, tall and small. And in the Vermont Conference, we pray for the pastor and people of the Federated Church of East Arlington. And in the United Church of Christ, we lift up prayers for first responders serving those in need across the world, for EMT people and firemen and pol firemen and women and police and those who were first on the scene, as well as those who work for safety in all of our communities. O Son of God, you walk on the waters of turmoil to meet us in the midst of your purpose for our lives. Help us to recognize your presence, help us to remember your promise, and help us to rely on your power and receive your peace through every storm. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is number 546, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound That Saved a Wretch Like Me, 546. <clears throat>
Friends, won't you kindly be seated? Today's reading is Matthew 14, 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After that, he climbed a mountain by himself to pray. That night, a storm battled the disciples' boat while they were out in the middle. But in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on water. They were terrified and cried, it's a ghost. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water toward Jesus. But the wind started kicking up and Peter became frightened and began to sink. Jesus immediately reached out and caught him saying, O ye of little faith. Thank you, Kate, for reading that Bible story that undergirds my sermon entitled Immediately on Second Thought. Before I preach though, let us pray. O oh God of love, O oh God of truth, let us say strong things gently and gentle things strongly. Let us speak the truth in love to all and love the truth that lives in each. Let us hear the truth as we each need it and live that truth, O oh God, we heed it through Jesus, your word and our Lord. Amen. Immediately. Could there be a better word in all of scripture to help us celebrate First Responders Sunday? There is no sooner first response humanly possible than immediately. And we certainly give heartfelt thanks to our ambulance and rescue crews, our fire departments, law enforcement officers, even our road crews for answering the call for help as immediately as they do. The Greek word in the Bible for immediately is euthios, means instantaneous, without hesitation, forthwith. Most of the time, it is a writing style word that's used to enhance the miracles of Jesus, such as he healed someone immediately, or he calmed a storm immediately, or he banished an evil spirit immediately. And friends, when it comes to our first responders, I hope we don't lose sight of the miraculousness of their efforts. I hearken back to a phrase that was popularized by the late great Henry Nouwen who said, ministry is interruption. And I think of all the family dinners, the sound sleep at midnight, the sporting events of children that were interrupted in order to save a life or a home and I say, bravo, first responders, for your ministry of immediately. And I think about the ministry of immediately in our society. I think about bureaucracies, insurance companies, legal system, governmental red tape, the military, and I know that we need organizations, but do we need to worship them as much as we do? Because so often, they slow down the ministry of immediately. They discourage those most in need from reaching out and asking for help. One of the things that I love about this congregation is all the different ways that they allow the ministry of immediately to be healthy to those in need. 
And the more other churches go part-time and lock their doors and only focus on Sunday morning worship, the more that the ministry of immediately suffers. But the ministry of immediately is really not my main focus this morning. I want us to think about the spirituality of immediately. Because I think that's what the Bible lesson encourages us to do. As I said, the Greek word for immediately is euthios, and it occurs in the New Testament 79 times. In the Old Testament, it occurs five times. Clearly, Christian scripture wants us to explore the spirituality of immediately. And I think especially so in this morning's Bible story. It is one of the few stories that has immediately pop up three different times in the same story. What's it trying to tell us? Well, let's think about it this way. Immediately says a powerful truth about ourselves. What we do immediately speaks to our instinct. How we react immediately is us being at our most unfiltered, uncensored, unconsidered. Our Bible story suggests to us that immediately is where the truth of our faith gets tested and where we, somewhat like the disciple Peter, are judged, O oh, ye of little faith, or not. Let's look again at the details. So that night, a storm battered the disciples' boat while they were out in the middle. But in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. They were terrified. They cried, it's a ghost. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. And then later in the story, this pops up. Jesus says, come. So Peter gets out of the boat and starts walking on the water toward Jesus. But the wind starts to kick up and Peter becomes frightened and begins to sink. Jesus immediately reaches out and catches him, saying, O oh, ye of little faith. In both of those scenarios, we see the disciples immediately being exposed. That is the case for most of us, too. Many people live according to their immediately. They react instead of proact. They resort to their default emotion, their natural state of mind, their unplanned, unconsidered self. And so fear and anger and retaliation and, and greed and escape and pride and denial. This is just a short list of people's immediate reactions. What does your immediately say to you about yourselves. Many times my immediately is self-defense. When I get criticized, I get defensive. I see my mistakes in glaring clarity, my successes not so much. This type of immediately can magnify conflict in marriage, in the workplace, Certainly in politics, in a couple of weeks, we'll be voting for our national leaders. Have you considered analyzing candidates according to their immediately? I think our gospel story suggests we do. In other words, before we follow someone, we should consider who they are, uncensored, unfiltered, unvarnished. And I know that that's hard because so many politicians are programmed by focus groups and spin doctors and party loyalty. 
and the history of campaigns has been fairly judgmental. Remember Edmund Muskie, whose presidential aspirations ended when he shed tears and cried? And who can forget Jimmy Carter's candor, I lusted in my heart? And our own Governor Dean's presidential hopes came to a screeching halt as he screeched like a banshee. As our Bible study story suggests, people sink or swim in relation to their immediately. For more than a decade, I was a chaplain at a county jail. And one thing that so many of these prisoners had in common was their lack of impulse control. They were victims of their immediately. But in a larger sense, when we think about nuclear weapons, a single person's immediately could wipe out the world. But friends, the bottom line of this morning's story doesn't end with immediately. It really celebrates what comes after that. In two instances where the word immediately occurs, it is immediately followed by Jesus. But immediately, Jesus. Jesus spoke saying, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And then later the wind starts kicking up and Peter becomes frightened and begins to sink. Immediately, Jesus. Jesus reaches out and catches him. You see, our Lord wants to remedy our immediately. Our Lord wants to rescue us from our immediately. Our Lord wants to become our second thought as immediately as possible. I want to have us think about the famous Sermon on the Mount and recall Jesus' six antitheses where he taught, don't swear, but I say to you, let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. He taught, don't retaliate, don't live by an ethic of eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say unto you, turn the other cheek. When he taught, don't act upon your anger, but I say unto you, come to terms with your accuser. When he taught, don't just love your neighbor, but I say unto you, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. In all of these teachings, Jesus is trying to make himself the second thought to his disciples immediately. Likewise, each of his teachings are meant to push us to live by our second thoughts, not our first ones, and to make those second thoughts begin with Jesus. In closing, the older I get, the more I realize I do almost nothing immediately. I, I've really slowed down a lot, much of it due to some aches and pains. But our Lord prays that we should all slow down, and it's not about aches and pains. He wants us to slow down from living by our immediately and be guided by our second thought, which he hopes and prays is himself and his teachings. So, I guess, in a manner of speaking, Jesus wishes to be the first responder to our first response. Amen. As we come to our time of an offering, we remember that Christ has freely given us the gift of grace and salvation. Let us, therefore, 
freely offer our generous gifts of gratitude to him. Let us worship God with our morning offering. Let us pray. O oh, generous God, we thank you for your call and your claim upon our lives. We pray that our faith will increase, that we may trust you immediately, and that our practice of generosity will be enlarged, and that our joy in believing will encourage others. In Jesus' name, we offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 609, Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee, 609.
may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us today and forevermore. Amen.